This is going to be part one of my podcast with Dan Aquino. Uh, we go into the Eastern Conference previews. We're also going to do part two where we go into the Western Conference previews and guess the awards. Uh, partway through that Western Conference preview, my laptop was about to die. Therefore, my mic had to be disconnected a bit. So the second half of my mic specifically is warbly. I address that there. So uh, that's the reason that the audio is screwed up a little bit over there, but it's still listenable. Um, And uh, yeah, so enjoy this episode with Dan Aquino and I, as we go into our in-depth analysis of the Eastern Conference. teams that missed the playoffs so this is obviously not counting the plan okay this is actually like pretty difficult because one really bad team is making the plan in the east yeah you're right one really bad team and and just can you say your teams again that you have missing the playoffs i have the bulls the hornets the pistons the nets and the wizards okay all right so i have the raptors missing the playoffs Mm -hmm. and i'm going to give you my reasons why um, and then I have basically that's the team. Um, and then I have uh, the Hornets, the Bulls, the Nets, and the Wizards also missing. So we align on every team except so you have you have the Pistons I have that's my hot take. I have the Pistons making the play in. Okay. This doesn't mean I think the Pistons are going to be good. Okay. I just have the Pistons making the play in. That's my hot take. I've thought a lot about this. And would you like to hear my thoughts first? Or do you want to give your Oh, yeah, I, I want to hear that because that's, okay. that's okay. surprising to me. Every team, basically in the Eastern Conference, is going to want to be in on the Cooper flag sweepstakes. Except the Detroit Pistons. And I'm going to give my reasons. They owe it to their fans to be competent this year. Mm-hmm. They owe it to their fans. Cade Cunningham does not want to lose again. They hired a new coach and J.B. Bickerstaff. They've added more talent, more shooting on the team that makes sense. They just added Tobias Harris. So you know he's going to be good because he's not playing for Philadelphia anymore. And my whole thing is their intention is to not be one of the worst teams in the league this year and to improve. And I don't think that's going to be the mentality of the other teams, even Toronto, because I saw Masai Ujiri and Sean Marks at that Rutgers St. John's game watching Dylan Harper and uh, Ace Bailey. So I think while Toronto has a lot of talent on the team, it's an expensive team that doesn't also really make any sense. And I think Cade Cunningham's ceiling is actually better than Scotty Barnes's. And I think this is a year, this is Cade's fourth year in the league. It's usually when we see guys like him pop. He's got more talent. He's got a new coach that's going to instill more um, discipline, more of an intention of winning. Bickerstaff has a history of taking teams out of the mud, like Cleveland. Remember that? Like they showed signs with like that Colin Sexton year and Garland, and they like beat the big three Nets in like 2021. It was like, oh, look at Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember. And then the that. next year, they had a really good season. So I'm anticipating that something similar. I don't think the Pistons want to be sorry this year because we've seen them be sorry and their their excuse to the fan base is, well, we're trying to get the number one pick. We're trying, And they've gotten burned so many times. So I actually think they're going to try and be better this year. And remember, they don't really have a lot of competition for that 10th spot. And I don't even think they have to play great basketball to be a playing team this year, a 10th seed. Um, they got to be better than the Chicago Bulls, the Charlotte Hornets, and uh, you know the Brooklyn Nets, and and all these teams that aren't good. And Toronto, Toronto wasn't good last year, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I like some of the players on their team, Masai Ujiri, all that, whatever. But I that's my risk. Okay, that's my team making a jump to mm. playing the Detroit yeah. Pistons. Are making the play in this year. So just for context, the Hawks were the tenth seed last year. They only won thirty six games. So yes, 
But it's correct. not the same because the Hawks are here. I have nine. We'll get to the Hawks later. Yeah, yeah. There's nine teams in the East that are playoff playing, and then it drops mm-hmm. to there's like a- these teams could honestly be the worst six teams in the league. Because like the 14th team in, in the West may not even be like atrocious. Like the 14th team in the West could probably make the plan in the East. So mm-hmm. I'm going with the Pistons because I think that the only bottom tier team that doesn't have the intention of losing as much. Yeah, I think they could have the intention of not losing, but still with that roster and still a lot of growth needed for some of the young players like Duran and Ivy and Thompson. Uh, I just don't know how good they're going to be. I think if Kate is healthy, they'll definitely be more competitive because I think that was definitely part of the reason uh, they were still so bad. These past two seasons, he's kind of missed some time. And I do agree with you. I think he's a really good player. Uh, Big 6'6 guard, has a lot of skills, and he does not want to be losing anymore. He said that before. So, But Tim Hardaway Jr. and Tobias Harris, I'm not sure how much they really elevate that team. Um, No, they're not good. They're not good. (laughs) But they're, they're the only, they're the best of the worst, strictly because of their intentions. Hmm. Because I don't think Toronto wants to be good, or maybe maybe Toronto just wants to be like Miami and I, be mediocre. So, so like the reason I have them in, I just think they're gonna have a full season with Manuel quickly and R.J. Barrett. Mm-hmm. I liked what I saw from Grady Dick in the preseason. Mm-hmm. Scotty Barnes, I think, is a really good player, and I just think maybe this collection of talent they bring this team up. They do have a question of who their bigs are because they really don't have like a conventional like seven footer, anyone like that. And with the Pistons, they're still going to be struggling defensively. So it is really a crapshoot of which one of these five exactly. or six we're, we're, worst we're, teams you're going to we, choose. We don't want to spend too much time on the 10th seed sure. in the Eastern Conference. And just for the Bulls, I the only reason I don't have them in is because I anticipate that they will try to move off Zach Levine. And they're going to bite the bullet. Whatever the deal is, they're just going to take it because there's just there's just no reason to hold on to to him and the rest of the guys on this roster. But let's uh let's move on to the teams we do have in the in the play-in. Hold on, uh, just one, just hold on one second because yeah. I want to talk about just oh the Nets. Just just no, just my thoughts. Okay, okay, just on yeah, each yeah, yeah. bad playoff team. Okay, so Raptors, expensive bad team. We just talked about them. Okay, mm-hmm. Hornets. They really just need a fully healthy season from LaMelo Ball for me to take them seriously. For sure. And I yeah. can't. Uh, the Bulls. What a disastrous team of guards. <laughs> like, just, oh, my God. Just yeah. a team that makes zero sense. And you're right. I think they're going to be, I think they're going to look to move. Uh, not just Zach Levine. I think they're going to look to move a lot of them. This team makes no sense to me. I feel bad for Billy Donovan because I don't think he's like a garbage coach, but he'll probably be fired. Um, mm-hmm. The Nets. And we talked about this. There's a world where the Nets are better. Than we think, because you look at their yeah. team, they actually have a lot of like competent NBA players. People actually thought they'd be worse than the Wizards. I think their over under is no. worse than the Wizards. And it's like, did you watch this team at all? Like, mm-hmm. like they, they have like competent players, um, you know, but I ultimately think they sell a bunch of those guys and their intention is to get into the bottom three. And I feel bad for Cam Thomas because I don't think it's his fault. Um and I actually, well, another thing that worries me is because I like the direction and I like the coach so far. And if Jordy Fernandez is a good coach, I'm not sure like that's a bottom three team. But I just think they leave him with nothing. I think he's got nothing but like bone uh, at the trade <laughs> deadline. Yeah. And uh, you just bring up guys, see what you can you can get and trade the vets. And then the Wizards are just brutal. And honestly, the, that team, the Wizards are so pathetic to me. That I feel for any draft pick, like top tier guy they get. Like I feel like going into that building, I have no confidence they're gonna do anything. I think I think they should get rid of all the cancerous guys like Kuzma Pool. It's hard, but try to find somebody to get those guys out of your building because they are not winning players to me. I know Jordan Poole was a part of a championship team. I think he's proven lately in his career that that might be gone. Yeah. Similar to like Wiggins was a part of a championship team, but I don't think Wiggins can do that again. So those are just my quick thoughts on the East teams that missed the playoffs. Are we going to go into the West teams when we get to the West? I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay, bit. cool. All right. Okay. Um, So you mentioned the Hawks. I do have the Hawks making the plan because um, I think Trey Young, I think back being the sole playmaker 
I think we're going to see him back to an old form, uh, kind of before the Jajate Murray, where he was a really good player, 25 and 12 a game. Uh, otherwise, unless they decide to offload some of the veterans they have on their team, like Capella and uh, DeAndre Hunter, um, I think they'll still be a competent team. They'll be good offensively. They're going to struggle defensively just like they have been. Um, but in the Eastern Conference, they should still get it in there. So you have the Hawks 9? Yeah, the Hawks 9. I have Hawks 9 too. There's potential for a better Hawks season. Because I I'm like you. The Murray thing made no sense. Now this roster actually does make more sense. There's a lot more bigger wings on this team. Um, we'll see how the number one pick plays. I still can't like really pronounce his name. Is that um, Risa Shea, I think? Yeah, I can't, you know, prove to me why I should be able to pronounce the name. Okay. Um, but um there's like I said, there's potential, but I need to see it. And we're going to get to the Pelicans in the West, and I have very similar thoughts on them. There's potential for a really good Hawks season, but it's up to Trey Young. And you got to – I I was for trading DeJounte because, honestly, DeJounte at this point, you know, we'll get to my thoughts on him later on, but he, he was clear it was hurting Atlanta. And now Atlanta has more size, shooting. It should be better defensively. Up to Trey Young. Basically, yeah. They were like... Quinn Snyder, you know? Yeah. They were like... uh, they Whenever one of them played and the other didn't, they were like a 500 team. And then when they both played, they lost more than they won. So Mm -hmm. it it made sense to eventually move off of that. So I I can feel like we're probably going to have some differences here because now is when it gets tough with which teams you're really taking, especially in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to move back up to the top because that's probably where we agree. Okay. I have the Celtics first and I have the Knicks second. I do too. Um, Celtics, I think I think they're gonna be not as dominant as they were exactly last season, but I think they're still gonna be a really great team. Uh oddly a championship team was coming into the season with like a chip on their shoulder because everyone has been so dismissive about dismissive of their run to the title because of how kind of not lucky, but how you know easy it kind of was because of the injuries that they had to uh play against. But Tatum, his jumper looks a lot better uh, than did last season. That was really a point of contention of how bad his jumper was, especially in the finals. If that is better and this team, as dominant as they were last season, if they're mostly healthy, I think they're going to be really good again. And I have the Knicks second, obviously. Um, I actually thought about putting them first, uh, but a few days ago we got the injury news of Precious. Achua is now going to be out for the few first few weeks. They're incorporating the new pieces, and I know you want to talk about this, but obviously a big storyline has been Michael Bridges' a jump shot. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I have the Celtics number one, defending champions, best roster on paper still, and I think Joe Mazzulla has broken his coaching demons. Um, I think he proved a lot of people wrong, and I respect it, and I'm going to be fair, and I think Joe Mazzulla has elevated himself to be one of the better coaches in the NBA. I really do. And I think he deserves credit for it. Um, Another reason, um, I think a big reason why you're saying the Celtics won't be as dominant is because of the Porzingis injury. Porzingis is not going to come back for a long time. I still think the Celtics will be fine. And to me, there's no case really why you can confidently put another team ahead of them. Um, Talk about the weak path to the finals or whatever. As a Yankee fan, I'm getting a lot of similar, you know, things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you play. You got to beat them. Okay. And you know what? I picked Dallas over Boston in the finals last year, right before we started, mainly because of that. And it didn't mean anything. It did, The road didn't matter. Dallas right. went through a way more difficult road than Boston did. And it didn't matter. It's this big reason why I'm picking the Yankees in the world series. I'm going to have that on, you know, on the other okay. conversation. Okay. Uh, but I'm just telling you, I, I it does not matter to me. It doesn't matter. As long as you, you got to play who you play. And to be honest, I think it's up for debate on if the Knicks were as good last year uh, as we might think. Because Brunson did play in those games versus the Pacers. And I understand the injuries and whatever, right? I think it's up for debate on how good the Pacers are. Because I was for a while thinking, yeah, they were lucked out with their path or whatever. But I'm actually pretty high on the Pacers this year, and we'll get to that. Um, So that's why I have the Celtics, number one. Number two, I have the Knicks. And the reason why I have the Knicks is not because necessarily I 
am in love with the acquisitions this summer. I still have a ton of concerns with this roster right now, mainly because you have, we talked about it when the cat trade happened, you have to rely on Carl Anthony Towns as your rim protecting center. And the last time that happened, a seventh seed was the case. Now, D'Angelo Russell was the point guard for that team. So I guess like maybe don't, and Edwards was in his second year. So maybe don't put too much stock into it, but there's a reason why the Timberwolves traded for Rudy Gobert. Now Towns has a lot more responsibility. Can he handle that responsibility? That's yet to be seen. If he's in foul trouble, which he is in a lot, that's that's a big deal because then you're taking the second best scorer off the floor. Um, Mikkel Bridges. A lot is riding on this guy. I think a lot of people thought Towns was going to be the dude that was going to be criticized all the time. I still think that's possible. If Mikkel Bridges plays the way that he has played in this preseason, which a lot of people are like, oh, it's just preseason, just preseason. To me, the flaws that you're seeing in this preseason could very well carry over into the regular season. And I think what a lot of Nick fans, I, listen, I, 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 my thoughts of the trade are out there. I believe the Knicks overpaid for a player that is was not worth it for the direction that they were in. They traded for five. They traded five first round picks for a guy to build a Villanova team that never really existed because Dante Divincenzo was gone, and considering Divincenzo now has beef with uh, Jalen Brunson's dad, it looks like they're those guys aren't going to be talking for a while, or at least a little bit. Um, and Mikel Bridges now, Dante Divincenzo was a sniper. Now you got Mikel Bridges with a jumper that, listen, I'm going to be fair. His jumper does look different. This isn't like, that's not the jumper necessarily that was with the Nets. So now you got to take his play with the Nets last year, which was very concerning. And now you got to add a broken jumper to it. So he's got to play defense, which by the way, I remember why, I know it's preseason, but I was watching a little bit of that game. And I think like the first defensive possession for the Knicks, it was a switch play with LaMelo and Bridges. And LaMelo just blew by Bridges and scored. And I was like, hmm, that was the defense I saw Mikel Bridges play a lot last year. So I understand the numbers are there. The durability is there. He's going to be playing shooting guard for this team, and he kind of can't shoot right now. And I think that's really concerning. And however, I don't trust any other team in the East more than I trust Jalen Brunson in the Knicks. Jalen Brunson has earned that. Tom Thibodeau has earned that. But the questions are there, and I just want to brace Nick fans. This year may not be as great as you were expecting. But the two seed, I'm giving it to the Knicks because I believe in Jalen Brunson to carry them to that spot. I am not worried. Okay. Now, Bridges shot 2 of 19 from 3 in the preseason. That's really bad. And he was 0 of 10 in the last game. And he said that he has been the trying Wizards. to. It was the Wizards, yeah. He said he's been trying to fix his jump shot since, uh, like f- his days in Phoenix. And I don't know what it is. He has like it, it, he he's releasing it higher than he like did before. So there's no hitch in it. It's just him adjusting, I think, to an, an imp- maybe hopefully improved jump shot, just a different jump shot. So I do think eventually it will improve. And defensively, I have the same concerns with Cat. And now that we've lost Precious, we're really sitting in the front court. If Cat has his foul trouble and if he's not um, a deterrence at the rim, it's going to be a struggle uh, defensively. But I think Bridges together with OG Hart, who's kind of got to find his way in the starting lineup. He's voiced some uh, how his some concerns about you know kind of his role on this team now. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he moves to the bench and we start Deuce McBride uh, just to kind of give him more to do when he comes off the bench because now we're going to be relying upon him more to be a rebounder and to kind of play that four position rather than playing the two in the starting lineup uh, or whatever number he, whatever position really he's playing. Um, but I'm not, I think this team's going to be really good. I don't think they'll be as good as the Celtics, but I do think they'll be better than they were last year. I think this is a 54, 55 win team. Um, and I'm, But there's going to be, obviously, points in the season where people are panicking. We start the season kind of tough. Our first four games are against all Eastern Conference playoff teams. If we start 2-2, two and two, people are going to ring the alarms if Bridges struggles. But I think over the course of the season, they're going to find their way once they get more chemistry with each other, and I think they're going to be a really good team. So 
rest of the, uh, do you have more thoughts or? I just want to talk about the Josh Hart element because I saw this okay, coming yeah. too. I mean, Nick fans love Josh Hart. He was great in the postseason for them last year. Josh Hart is not a, for the Knicks to be the best possible team. Now he's, he'll play crunch time. He should play crunch time with mm-hmm. them, but he should not be starting. Yeah. Um, you know, if it, it, he's, it's just a too small a lineup and I get it. He rebounds really well. That's for crunch time. And you were like, well, well, about how you close the game. Well, starting the game matters a little bit too. And the majority of the game matters too. Right. It makes sense to have a rim protecting shot blocking big for three quarters of the game. And then the fourth quarter, you can go smaller, maybe have more flexibility uh, on offensively. Um, JJ, John, just Descrem- John Jastrzemski, who I'm a big fan of, and I think he's a great host for New York, New York, um, the New York, New York podcast. Really good sports mind, really great sports mind. Uh, for top 15 athletes in New York, number 15, he had Josh Hart, and I thought that was insane because Josh Hart's coming off the bench this year. So <laughs> you're fine. I mean, you're seeing it. Josh Hart doesn't really know what his role is on this team. His role is to be the six man glue guy because Dante DiVincenzo's gone. He's got to be that dude, and he's got to be, whenever they call his number, he's going to be ready to step up, and he's got to be okay with not starting because the best idea of this Knicks team is with him not in the starting lineup. Yeah. So if we look at the rest of this conference, I have – you said you were hot on the Pacers. Do you have the Pacers third? No. Okay. I was just making sure. I have the Bucks third. Okay. Do you as well? No, I have the Sixers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm way off on the Sixers though, but I but just you think have them it, third. I have them third. First of all, I don't trust any other really team in the East. I'm mm. t- I'm I'm talking about who's going to be there in the regular season. The Sixers are going to win a ton of regular season games. Like I think we it's safe to say that even if an Embiid injury happens, Paul George injury happens, like Maxie's good enough to do some things. They added a lot of depth pieces. The 76 great coach too, Nick Nurse. 76ers are going to win a lot of regular season game, which, games, which is why I have them third. I also like the the idea of Maxi, um, Embiid, and Paul George makes more sense to me offensively and defensively than the Bucks with their old a- aging veteran players, in my opinion. Um, I have the Bucks four, by the way. Um, yeah. So... Philly is a great regular season team. They honestly may finish above the Knicks in the regular season. It's just if they're healthy. I cannot trust Joel Embiid again in the playoffs. And the only thing that, I like, if you're in a really dark room and there's like a tiny little light in the corner and you can't see a thing, but that little tiny light, that's Tyrese Maxey. He's the guy that could change things. It's not going to be Paul George. So Tyrese Maxey is that, glimmer of hope for Philadelphia fans to get to the promised land because I'm so sick of the foul baiting by Joel Embiid who's foul baiting in the Olympics for God's sakes <laughs> and yeah. now he's not going to play back to backs I just I, I don't think Joel Embiid Bill Simmons has said this before and I completely agree with him I don't think he gets it yet and he needs to prove it to me because he should have beaten if he's the player that we all say he is I don't care if he's hurt. He's hurt every regular season. He's hurt all the time in the playoffs. Not every regular season. All the time in the playoffs. They should have beat the Knicks last year if he was the player we say he is. Because Maxi was terrific in that series. And any if you have that guy, you got to get it done. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I don't believe... I think he's got to prove it to us again because he's older now why he's that guy. So I have Philly third for regular season. I think they're going to have a lot of talent. They did a really good job this summer. I just, I'm off. As being championship yeah. contenders, I'm off. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy them as like real contenders because of most of the things you just said. I have the Sixers fifth, um, but just for context, a lot of these teams finish like one or two games off. So it is it is really just going to be like a one or two, three game difference. But I put the Sixers fifth because I just don't believe in this roster as being real and being competitive in terms of with the Knicks and the Celtics. Uh, no Embiid back to backs, which is I mean, I don't understand why we're still of the mindset. You can do this in the regular season and it work in the postseason. Uh, everyone points to like the Raptors doing this with Kawhi. And it worked that one year, and they ended up winning the title. But the Clippers tried it for years. It did not work. 
and B not playing back to backs means he's going to be consistently out for the rest for the in the regular season. Paul George, you have concerns. He's already hurt with hyperextended knee. We'll see if he's ready uh, for their game on Wednesday. And then I don't like the bench. I mean, you're relying on Kyle Lowry. I saw a report that Eric Gordon might start the first game of the season. There's no way you're starting Eric Gordon in 2024 of a team that's trying to win a title. Um, but like you mentioned, I think the X factor is Tyrese Maxey. If he's incredible, then they're still going to be able to win regular season games and they'll be fine coasting this way. I'm not sure if they'll be like the third or second seed, but there will be a good team. And if they can get Embiid healthy, you know, they have a shot. But I think Embiid, until he shows that he can be the player he is in the regular season in the playoffs and be healthy and consistent, you know, I don't see this team ever winning a title. Um, I have the Pacers fourth because I really like this roster. I really like the talent. Halliburton fully healthy, hopefully for the whole season. Full mm-hmm. season of Pascal Siakam. Uh, Benedict Mather, and they also get him back. People kind of forget that he went out halfway through the season last year. Um, and I find interesting the James Wiseman experiment because I think he has the skills to be a decent NBA player, but just hasn't had really the opportunity or the situation that kind of catered to him. I saw some stuff I liked from him in the preseason. It's just preseason. Um, but I think he's going to get some playing time, especially because Miles Turner defensively is going to be get, getting killed by a lot of guys. So they th- throw in Wiseman in there and give him a different look. Never been a Wiseman guy. <laughs> off, off on James Wiseman. Um, <laughs> very off on James Wiseman. Okay, okay. So you have the Pacers four. Yeah. Um, I have the Pacers six. Basi- you know, basically the same spot as last year. Mm-hmm. For, I guess, like regular season purposes like honestly i probably would have the pacers higher for thinking like contenders because i honestly trust them more as a contender than cleveland but i think cleveland is more built for the regular season (laughs) so we're just talking seedings you know um i also probably trust the pacers in a playoff game like i don't mean trust them but if it's pacers bucks again like that's not an easy series um no and I actually do want to get to the Bucks after the Pacers thing because I didn't spend enough time on the Bucks. I don't think we did. So just to talk about the Pacers. Um, Halliburton is healthy, looks healthy, because um, uh, he was good in the Olympics, right? So he didn't get a lot of time in the Olympics, but he was good in the Olympics, you know? And I think I needed to see that because Halliburton, it seemed like a lot last year, was not healthy. Um, full year with Siakam. They seem to really have a different element to their team with Pascal Siakam. And it looked like it didn't work tremendously at first because I think a mix of Halliburton being injured. A lot of these guys, Nemhart, like these dudes showed they can make shots in the playoffs. These guys are an offensive juggernaut. The defense has to be better, though. Um, But I think as a threat, they will be there. And I expect a lot of the younger guys to get better and Siakam to be very similar. I mean, we've seen Pascal Siakam be bad in the playoffs, but we've also seen him be really good, I think, with a lot of the spacing in Indiana. He could really thrive in that. And, you know, let's not forget, they really challenged the Celtics in some of those games. Like, they honestly just blew certain games and that could be a lack of playoff experience. Yeah, yeah. They won a game seven at the garden. You can, I think there's value in that. I really do. Even though the Knicks were banged up, I think there's value in coming back in that series, especially that Jalen Brunson did play in it. So the Pacers showed me a lot last year and they they did nothing to make them think I'm going to, they're going to be worse. It could be a team like Atlanta where it was just a team that everything went right for them, you know, but I don't know. I didn't really see that because the, you know, I, I like their style of play and it apparently keeps them in games. And I think it showed me something there. Um, so, yeah. Um, and Matherin, you know, you just you mentioned Matherin. Uh, I expect him to be better and uh, play a big part of this team. Uh, let's talk about the Bucks. Um, they're old. They're kind of disheveled. Chris Middleton is out. Yeah, I saw that. Um, but you know what? Giannis is still great. I think Doc Rivers is an excellent coach in the regular season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's the hardest thing ever to take over a team midseason when you have Giannis and Anacumpo and all the Damian Lillard. It's the <laughs> hardest thing in the world. It's so difficult. This team last year, like, a lot of things went wrong. And 
yeah, they're a year older. They didn't necessarily get more athletic. You know, Brook Lopez is old now. I love Brook Lopez. He's old. Um, I expect Dame to be better. I expect Giannis to be great. And I think in the playoffs, um, you still have to take those two seriously. I think if they're healthy in the first round, they probably beat the Pacers still because the Pacers, they went six games, you know, you know, all that. I, I still think they're capable of, I mean, I have no, I'm, I don't think they're going to win a championship. Like I think like contender wise, which is what they're trying to be. Yeah. Tons of flaws. But if you're going to be a top four team in the East, I think I'm confident enough they can get there. So I have them fourth. Yeah. Uh, just just to close out the Eastern Conference, because I do want to get to the West. Um, six, seven, eight. I have Cavs sixth, Magic seventh, and I have the Heat eighth. Cavs are kind of the same. They brought bringing back all these guys. They'll be healthy, hopefully. Uh, Mobley, I do expect, will take a little bit of a leap. Um, but I think just they're not as good as these other teams. Just flatly. And then, I, I, I don't really understand what Cleveland's doing. The flaws with the team are s- the same as last year. They are a collection of talent that doesn't fit well together. Garland, and listen, they I guess they solved the Mitchell thing, I guess. Yeah, got him. The time being. Three years, right? Which I still can't believe. Um, Mitchell Garland together doesn't make sense. Um, probably makes a little bit more sense than Allen and Mobley, but mm-hmm. that doesn't make sense either. We saw them play better last year when Allen was in the lineup and then Mitchell was in the lineup and Mobley and Garland were out. And then it was Mobley and Garland. We saw them have flashes there. Like, you know, that's that's what this team is. You know, uh, Kenny Atkinson, love the guy. Glad he's a head coach in the NBA again. Uh, he's not fixing that, in my opinion. It's a very, it's a flawed roster. Um, I guess uh, give us some stuff for Cam Johnson. That'd be nice. You can take him off our team. I don't, <laughs> I don't really like him anymore. Makes more sense in Cleveland. Um, Magic, you had them. So you had the Cavs six, you said? Yeah, I have the Magic seventh. I have um, the Magic seven too. Um, case of like, they, they're going to be better than last year, I think, but just the, not better than these other teams. Um, they, yeah. they can't score, man. They can't score. And I like KCP. I think the argument for them to be better is Paulo just takes another leap, which he's certainly capable of doing. Yeah, that's, that's Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner has, you know, there's there's worries there. They still don't have a point guard, so they can't score, and that's my issue with them. Miami, I think it's possible, possible the Heat have a better regular season because I think Jimmy Butler's pissed, wants a new, the, another contract. Sure. I can't trust it. The roster just isn't that good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. And Eric Spolstra. Jimmy Butler, healthy season, Eric Spolstra. That's the design for the Heat being consistent in the regular season, taking the regular season seriously. Because the last two years, I don't think they took the regular season seriously. Now I think they will. That's the case for them having a better year. And if that's the case, I mean, they could. They could finish higher. Um, mm-hmm. I don't see them finishing lower than eight. I think that, that no, would be pretty shocking. So we're talking about kind of the worst possible case scenario for the Heat this season because I think that's where we think they're at. But they could finish higher. Yeah, for sure. You never know that team. 